It's been a while since I've last made a video. Uh, I finished processing most of the uh, parts for the horizontal stabilizer as well as the trim tabs and elevators, um, or trim tabs for the elevators. So uh, by the processing, I mean I've deburred all the parts, I've primed all the parts. Uh, I'm using Axon Nobel, uh, uh, I forget, I think 463, 812, something like that. Um, uh, I've primed all the parts and now basically I have to dimple them. Um, and once I dimple them, I can then go about riveting them together. So before I dimple the, the parts, I thought I'd make a quick video to just kind of go through how I'm dimpling and why do you dimple. So first off, the reason why you dimple is uh, a lot of rivets, like universal head rivets, they kind of have a mushroom top and they're easier to install. But once you uh, have those rivets in, there's you know bumps all over the external or uh, the skins of the airframe. And that actually causes a non-trivial amount of drag among other things doesn't look quite as clean. Although in a lot of old World War II airplanes and uh, still a lot of airplanes made today, you see these kind of universal head rivets, these little mushroom heads sticking out. Um, most of uh, the RV-10, definitely all the uh, external skins have flush rivets, um, which basically means you have to dimple the skins a little bit. So uh, a flush rivet can fit in there and the flush rivet as the kind of, you can probably infer from the name, the flush, flush rivet sits flush with the skin of the, uh, of the aircraft. And so among other things that reduces drag, um, but uh, it also looks a lot cleaner. Um, it does take more effort though. In particular, you need to go about dimpling all the skins um, or countersinking uh, if the material's thick enough. So I'm gonna go through the three tools that I've been primarily using to dimple. Uh, first and foremost, especially on ribs and internal parts, I've used the uh, pneumatic squeezer and I just kind of put some uh, uh, dimpling sets in here and kind of go like this. So you kind of push this in each of the hole, give the foot pedal a little depression, this is foot operated, and um, it dimples the rivet. Um, the second thing that I use for very close quarters, typically so far I've only used this for the front of leading edges for the controls uh, of the vertical stabilizer, I'm gonna be using it on the horizontal stabilizer, um, is basically this kind of close quarters uh, dimple die set. Uh, it basically uses a pop rivet tool where you kind of put this thing in here and kind of give it a squeeze and it makes a dimple. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. And then the last thing I use is a uh, DRD, D, what is it, DRDT2. Um, and it's basically a C-frame uh, dimpler um, that kind of uses a lever that you throw. And it's really nice for getting far inside um, some of the skins. This thing only has, well, this particular yoke is three inches, I believe. So I can only get three inches in. Um, on some of the skins, obviously you need to get a lot farther. So the DRD T2 is the uh, tool that I use for that. So I'm gonna kind of walk through how I use that first. Then I'll talk about, you know, show you some videos of me using the pneumatic squeezer to dimple. And then just for kicks and giggles, we'll, uh, or I'll cover how I use this pop rivet tool uh, and the close quarters, close quarter dimple die set to uh, get some of the uh, more hard to reach holes and dimple those suckers. So let's start with the DRDD2, uh, DR, DRDT2. I want to say it's the R2D2. Anyway, let's start with that one first. So this thing here is the DRDT2 um, dimpler. It's kind of on a C frame and it uses this lever throw arm to kind of uh, squeeze the two dimple sets together and form a dimple. So I usually put the male on the bottom and the female on top, and then you can kind of reach inside you know, far inside some of the skin. So this is the uh, right top skin for the horizontal, excuse me, the uh, uh, right elevator. And kind of to show you how it works, you know, I'll line it up. Uh, gotta get this thing set right, there we go. You kind of put the male uh, end through the hole like this, you grab the lever and you just push down and it forms a dimple. So normally I'm using this, you know, you kind of got to be careful like all dimpling so you don't accidentally put a hole where a hole doesn't belong. Um, then you just go through dimpling these things. So sometimes you get lost doing it like I just did. There we go. Kind of just go through like that. So once you get going on it, it can go pretty quickly uh, and reaches those kind of uh, holes that are far inside some of these skins. So here's a closer view of how this works. You can see I kind of put the male end of the die or the male end of this uh, uh, dimple set kind of through there, you push this down, kind of give it a push, and there you go, it's got a dimple. 
Then you move on to the next hole and so on and so forth. So again, this is really nice for getting uh, dimpling holes that are deep inside these skins. Uh, in addition to the DRDT2, uh, they have a, a C-frame that's basically um, use a hammer to form, and that's think works pretty well. Um, I haven't used it, but from what people have said online is that it works pretty good. In some ways, I wish I would have gotten that because when you're dealing with a, uh, a skin that, um, when you're dealing with a skin that has kind of a fold over, like a, like a leading edge skin, this throw arm is pretty long and it gets in the way. And so it makes things kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and part of me wishes I got the other C-frame um, dimpler. But anyway, this is how the DRD-T2 works. Again, the next thing I'm using is the uh, pneumatic squeezer uh, to use this sucker. Um, this is really convenient to use on parts, internal parts, um, that you can get a good, uh, that are easy to reach, like this rib for the horizontal stabilizer. You basically just put the male inside like this, kind of give it a squeeze, and that's it. You can kind of go down the line uh, pretty quickly using this thing. And so I like it. It gives really consistent results, um, really easy to use. You don't have to worry about throwing that arm like on the DRDD2. Um, and uh, it's pretty nice. So I'll show you a little closer view of me kind of working through a line of holes on uh, one of these spars for the horizontal stabilizer. All right, I'll quickly show you me working down the line on one of these ribs with the uh, pneumatic squeezer uh, with the dimpling dies. And you can kind of get a sense for how quickly I can go through uh, uh, a part like this. Um, it's really convenient to use this pneumatic squeezer. Uh, it gives really consistent results. Um, and it's pretty fast. And there you go. I do, when I shove the male end through the hole, I do like to kind of make sure I see it sitting there before I, I push down on the uh, uh, pedal um, because I'm paranoid that I'm going to get impatient or try to do things quickly and end up pushing a hole through uh, where a hole shouldn't be. So anyway, that's kind of how this thing works. Okay, so the last tool that I mentioned that I use a lot uh, for dimpling, or at least on some of these hard to reach areas, is this close quarter uh, dimple die set. Um, basically it uses a pop rivet tool um, which kind of grabs uh, this right here, which has a female die right there, and it sort of squeezes together the female die and the male die like this, and it uh, forms actually a pretty decent dimple. It says it's not going to be very good um, or as good as some of the other methods, but it seems to be working reasonably well. So it's useful to get in some of these tight corners like right here. Uh, on this edge right here, I could actually get the pneumatic squeezer in there pretty easily, but just to film, um, it's easier to, for me to kind of demonstrate this tool on an edge like this. Normally down the uh, horizontal stabilizer more in the middle right there, I can't use the C-frame um, or the, uh, the squeezer to get in there. So that's kind of where I'd use this really. But basically you kind of insert this through the dimple or through the, the hole like that. You kind of put the male end on top right there. Let's see, that is the male end. Yes, it is. Then you get the pop rivet tool. Kind of push it up against it. I have to give it a squeeze until I feel a little bit of tension. Then I release, let it tighten up again. Then you squeeze a little bit more until it feels kind of firm like that. And then when you let it go, you end up with a dimple that uh, looks pretty good. Um, so there you go. Now the hole is dimpled. So, and this is the close quarters uh, dimple set. Works really well. Okay, so that's it. These are some of the tools that I'm using for dimpling. Um, now I'm basically going to go through, kind of dimple all the parts that I need to for the horizontal stabilizer, and then I'm going to start riveting that sucker together. And I can't really wait because putting things together, actually riveting things together and seeing it come together is really, really fun. Uh, just processing all the parts, doing all the deburring, dimpling and all that, especially the scuffing and priming is just really, really tedious. It's like I know there's going to be a payoff, but it's really fun when you actually get to see, you know, something being built. So. I'm gonna go finish dimpling a lot of these parts. I've already done some of the parts for the horizontal stabilizer. I'm gonna finish dimpling the parts that I haven't done and uh, 
start putting that sucker together. Anyway, so I'll put together a quick montage of me doing some dimpling, put some upbeat music, and that's it. I have finished dimpling all the parts, I think, to the horizontal stabilizer. So now the next step is just to rivet this whole thing together. Uh, and I will have to do that in another video because I'm about to go to bed. Um, I managed to dimple all the parts without punching any holes uh, where they weren't supposed to be any, and so that's good. I almost did one, but caught myself right before I did it. And overall, I think the dimpling went pretty smoothly. Um, the last time I did a whole bunch of dimpling was on the rudder. Uh, this was a whole lot more uh, dimpling um, than was involved in the parts in the rudder, um, but overall it went smoothly. So anyway, that's it for this video.